welcome back. This is session two. Last session we talked about why work is important to God and the fact that he's vitally and intimately interested in everything that we do every day. And today we're going to talk about something that's kind of dear to most of our heart, money. Now there's a scripture that says, well a misquoted scripture actually, that says that money is the root of all evil. That's the phrase that people use, but the actual scripture is it's the love of money that's a root of all kinds of evil. So we're not actually talking about money in the sense of uh, a physical thing that is evil, but it's the love of money. It's the worshipping of money. You can't serve mammon and God. So the money itself is not evil, it's neutral, it's amoral, not immoral, amoral, neutral. Uh, but the love of money, that is the thing that causes the problems and it's going after the money in worship that causes issues. So we have a problem with how do we manage all that? If God's interested in our work and he will provide for us, how do we manage money and greed? How do we balance those things out? Because we all have a, a tendency and a natural inclination to want more. So how can we put things in our life that's going to shift that dynamic and change that? and make it balanced in a work context. I want to share a little story with you. This is something that happened to me quite a few years ago now, but I was praying one day and this person kept coming to my mind and I just felt the Lord was saying to give this guy that I only met a couple of times actually, a, a large sum of money, money that would be sort of a sacrificial giving for us so we didn't have what we have now. But back in those days, this was a substantial amount of money and I felt God was saying to give this to this person and I kind of wrestled with that and struggled with it. And being a, a good wise man, I went to my wife and said, hey, what do you think? And um, Helen, she's a godly woman, I'm very blessed by being married to her. And uh, she prayed about it as well. And she said, look, I don't understand why, but I think God is saying that we should give this, this money to this particular person. And we felt to give in a slightly unusual way to go take the money out of the bank, nice big pile of banknotes, and go and knock on their door and give it to them. It was a substantial amount of money. We felt they might feel a bit odd if it just turned up anonymously. So Helen went and knocked on that door and gave a very surprised lady at the door a, uh, you know, a big wad of, of cash. And we didn't really understand why or what the context was. We didn't know anything that was going on. I heard later that this businessman was really struggling. He was having all sorts of issues and he was at work and he was saying to the Lord, Lord, you said you would provide. I need this money just to survive, just to pay these bills, just to meet this need. And he specified an amount and said, Lord, you've just got to be able to provide this for me. And there was a phone call and he picked up the phone and it was his wife saying, there's this crazy lady at the door who's got a wad of cash. And the amount that we had known from the Lord to give to that person was the exact amount that this guy had asked for and God met his need. What an incredible boost in his faith where he prayed and saw an immediate answer to God. He prayed, there was the phone call and there was the crazy lady. She's not a crazy lady actually, she's a great lady. But there was this person on the door giving money and all praise and all glory to God for that. I'm telling that story not to show any sort of generosity, but to show that God is intimately interested and will provide in the most miraculous ways in some, in some circumstances. In 2 Corinthians, it's written that God is able to make all grace abound to you so that all things at all times, you will have all that you need for every good work. What an incredible scripture. I love that scripture. It's in 2 Corinthians. Look it up. I don't know if I quoted it quite exactly right, but the essence of it is that he is a bountiful God. He'll provide all that you need, that you can be generous in all occasions. It's not a meager existence, but I want you to get something. This is a really important principle. I think that sometimes we go through times of lack, that wilderness experience, just as the Israelites went through the wilderness experience, where all the miracles were miracles of provision. God provided food for them, provided different things for them, their clothes didn't wear out. But every miracle in that wilderness, that time of want and need, they had to rely on God for a miracle of provision. It was very much about understanding that God would provide. When they went into the promised land, where they went into that 
place of um, maturity that came out of the wilderness and into the promised land, every miracle in that context was about expanding, about conquering, about increased influence and prosperity. Two very different experiences. And I think sometimes if we don't go through the wilderness experiences, we don't understand that everything we have, absolutely everything we have comes from the Lord. And if you're in that time right now, I'd encourage you persevere, yield to God and look for his provision in miraculous ways. And as you come through into the promised land and he gives you miracles of favor and influence and those kind of miracles, you'll acknowledge him and you'll know and understand that it's not the work of your hand, but it's only through the grace and provision and love of our Heavenly Father that we have anything at all. There's a lot of talk in churches about prosperity. You know, some churches, they won't talk about money at all. They kind of stay away from that. Others, that's all they talk about. It's like going to a Tony Robbins conference. But there's uh, nothing wrong with Tony Robbins. Great guy, does some great things. But in a spiritual context, this needs to be some balance. We need to talk about money. The Bible talked about money. Jesus talked about money and provision. But there needs to be a balance between those things. And in our contemporary society, we're very consumer driven and it's easy to be totally focused on those things. But we need to be generous and learn to be generous in order to be able to balance our natural tendency for greed. So how much is enough? We are all, if you're watching this video, wealthy enough to be able to plug into the internet or however you've received this information. We are wealthy on a global scale, whatever way you want to look at it. And prosperity to me is having all my needs met and enough to give away. That's a prosperous ex existence. God's placed us in different social settings and in different environments in different countries and our provision needs are different. But if we have all our needs met and enough to give away, we're prosperous in every way in my view. You know, there's nothing wrong with money, nothing wrong with having some coins in your pocket and enough to give away, enough to meet needs of other people as we come across them. The Good Samaritan, for instance, uh, it's a great story. I love the story of the, great, of the Good Samaritan. He was there, the only one who would step in and help that person up, help him up, take him to the inn, and he paid the innkeeper. And he said, you know, whatever else, whatever else he spends, I will absolutely, I'll meet that need as well. Now, if his Samaritan visa card was maxed out, he wouldn't have been able to put his hand in his pocket and meet the need that he saw. The religious people passed on the other side, but he was the Samaritan, the hated people. The Israelites didn't like the Samaritans, and yet he was there able to minister to that person and able to provide and meet that person's need and go to the innkeeper and say, I will meet all the costs for this man. I'll come back and I will pay you anything else that I owe you. Ecclesiastes tells us that God has given us the ability to create wealth. He's given us an ability and talents, but we have to put our hand to the plow with the certain things we have to do to be able to materialize that which he's already given us. I love the story about the two people in the fields, both outstanding in their field. Uh, outstanding in their field, I mean, not fantastic at what they do, but actually physically outstanding in their field. These are farmers. It's a time of drought. There's no rain and both these guys, they're in their fields praying for rain. Lord, send rain. It's dusty. There's no crops. It's just a disaster time. Both praying the same prayer, both out in their fields. The rains come. God answers that prayer. The drought is broken. The rains come. But only one of those people actually receives a harvest. The difference between those two people, one was praying and plowing his field. When the rains came, the ground was prepared, the crops grew, and he received a harvest. The other one hadn't prepared his field. He was crying out to God. And yet when the rains came, this field was not prepared to be able to receive that, and he didn't get his harvest. Same God, same prayer, same circumstance, the difference being only one received a harvest, and it was the one who put their hand to the plow. We have a responsibility to work hard, to endeavor and to apply ourselves to that which he has called us to do. We have a personal responsibility to respond to the calling that God has given us. So which one are you? Are you one who's going to receive a harvest or not receive a harvest? 
God's given us the ability and he will provide. But this our part as well. We need to engage, hear from him and be obedient and work hard in the place that he has given us. Profit is a good thing. Money is a good thing. Businesses aren't started to not make money. So if you're a business owner or you're engaged in a commercial environment, you're working for someone else, you're a career professional, regardless of whatever structure you're in, it's a good thing for the entity that you work for to make money and to make profit. We heard earlier in a previous session that work is from God came before the fall. It's a good thing. And work in a company environment is a good thing. So the outcome from that is profitability. Nothing wrong with a good profit. Now this, I just want you to hear this because this is interesting. If a company makes money and then doesn't give that money to Christian things, that is still okay. So even if there is no good application of the money that comes out of a business, the business itself making a profit is a good thing. Now listen to what I'm saying here. To me, ideally, profitability goes to Christian causes and it's building the kingdom and feeding the poor and doing all those things, that's better. But even without all that, it is intrinsically a good thing to make money. And you've got to do it in the right way, treat your people well, excellence in, this, in the service you provide, excellence in your product and all those things. But work and business and profit are intrinsically good things, even without that money going to great causes. So come back to that question that I asked at the beginning of this session. How do we balance greed? You know, we're all human. We all want things. We have our desires. So how do we, what mechanism has God given us to balance those things out? And to me, it's generosity. If you have, if you have a generous spirit, if you exercise that spirit and it grows, then that balances our natural tendency to greed. Proverbs said that one man gives freely and makes more. Another one withholds and loses it all. There's a there's a principle, a spiritual principle, that as we give away, God gives to us and sees us acting in a way that allows him to bless us more as we give freely out into meeting the needs of those around us. The best way to be generous is to structure things so that you can be generous when you need to be. You know, at the end of the day, it's all his. You know, forget the 10%, it's 100%. Everything that we have, everything that God gives us is His, and we're to be stewards of that. And I, I would encourage you to structure your giving. Put aside a portion that comes directly out of your source of income and put it away so that it's there and able to be given to certain things on a regular basis, but also enough to be able to give to other things. And it doesn't matter what you earn. Put a little bit aside, put something aside. Begin to get into the principle of moderating your desire for more with a desire to help other people. And God will grow that and balance those things out. But be generous. God's such a generous God. Everything we have is His. And we need to be able to meet the needs of those around us, the poor and, and such like, the needs for the, the church, the needs for missionaries, other things that come across our path on a daily basis. Here's an interesting thing about wealth. The Bible talks about people who run after money, who run after wealth, and go away from their faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. So we're not called to go after wealth, to go after money. To me, prosperity or wealth or provision is an outcome. We're to seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things will be added to us. God gives wealth and with it adds no sorrow. So how do we measure the thing between these two principles that if you go after riches, they, you can be pierced with many griefs and yet God gives wealth with no sorrow. And to me, it's the difference between chasing after money and chasing after God. If we do it God's way and we go after God and we listen to him, and we hear from him and we commit ourselves to what he's doing, the wealth and the provision and money and those things are an outcome that come out of that. They're a fruit. You're not going after the fruits, you're going after God, going after being obedient for Him. And the outcome is this prosperity and wealth and provision. In order to be able to do that, it has to be done God's way. We need to trust God with our circumstances. We need to trust God with the outcome. Do the right thing, work with integrity, 
Make the stand where we need to make the stand and let God worry about the circumstances. Let God worry about the consequences of our actions when we make a stand for him and do the right thing. I ran a small business called Notions Fabrics. It was my first kind of solar business that I ran. Small handful of people, few million turnover, relatively, relatively small. And I'd been through that business for a couple of years. It was turning around, it was doing really well. God had blessed it, it was growing. But I really struggled with the owner. You know, sometimes you kind of rub off against your boss a bit. He and I just were on different planets and I just struggled a bit in being able to, to manage that process. Young, enthusiastic, quite keen, wanting to do some things. And another role came along. It was a great opportunity. I thought, this is it. God set me free from here and he's taking me on to be, onto this new role, onto this new thing, into a new season. But the more I prayed about it, the more I felt uncomfortable, couldn't get that peace, could just wrestling with it and came to realize that God wanted me to stay where I was and not take this new opportunity. And I wrestled with that. But I gave my life to the Lord a long time ago and I eventually got to my knees and said, Lord, you know, whatever you want to do, if you want me to stay here and serve this guy for the rest of my life, I will do that. Whatever you want, your will be done, not mine. And we wrestle with those things some, sometimes, but the next day there was a letter that came to say that the organization I was working for, which was part of a larger group, had been bought by another company and they were in the middle of due diligence and working through that process. The outcome of that was we were acquired by the Charles Parsons Group that I eventually ran not only in New Zealand business, but ultimately having left and come back, ran the entire group running their global business. And that opportunity would have walked out the door if I'd walked out the door and gone somewhere else. And God knew. And I had surrendered and was willing to take the pain and do whatever it is that God was asking me to do. And yet the outcome of that obedience was more influence, more experience and greater blessing. Whilst it's us personally that receives the provision, it's not only for us. Yes, it is for us to a degree and sometimes we can give away more than we're meant to, but and it's a blessing for us to receive from God, but also we're to provide for our families and those around us, our community at church. We're called to meet the needs of the poor. We're called to give into the church and make sure the gospel is spread around the world through missionaries. There's lots of areas that we need to be mindful of and cognizant of to be able to give in and again, structuring your thinking around that, taking it before the Lord and saying, Lord, what do you want me to support? How do you want me to support? What level do you want me to support? And sometimes you'll get stretched, be asked to give beyond your understanding and sacrificially give. Other times there'll be seasons where you give in measure and with wisdom, but you need to discern that for yourself, but do it, go before the Lord with all your finances saying, Lord, you've given me this, what do you want me to keep and what do you want me to give away? We're given seed to sow and we're given bread to eat. You can't sow bread, it just goes soggy in the ground and you're eating your seed is a lack of wisdom and you won't get the fruit from the next harvest if you're eating your seed. So there's a balance between generosity and consumption, a balance between greed and generosity. They're important things to get right, but each one is individual. We're not to give under compulsion, we're not to give reluctantly, but go before the Lord and understand what He's asking us to do in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. My last point on provision is this. Have an eternal perspective. If you're sitting on your deathbed, nobody says, gee, I wish I spent more time at work. Gee, I wish I'd bought myself another car. It's about relationship. It's about the things that we've sowed into, that the resources that we've had that we only have here for 70, 80, 90 years probably at the most. And in a, from an eternal perspective, that's such a short period of time. The only things that we can take to heaven are eternal things. The things that we've done for him, things where we've had an impact on someone's life that's brought them closer to the Lord. And that those things of eternal value, when we roll forward a hundred years, a thousand years, 10,000 years, those things as we're sitting in heaven, those things are the things that have absolute value. Only those things of eternal consequence. And when, with the stewardship that we have, let's hold those things lightly. Let's be generous with what we have. Let's moderate our natural tendency for greed. 
with generosity in all things. And let's acknowledge that all that we have, everything that is provided for us, comes from him, from our heavenly Father. All glory and honor is his, all provision is his, all things are his. And he is the one that we are serving and we need to be thankful for what we have, satisfied with what he's giving us and move forward working for him, understanding that God has given us the ability to make wealth, that he's interested in our work. And as we serve him in the marketplace, he will bless us. That's the session for today. It's been great sharing with you. Money is such an important thing to get right. It can really tug on our heart and we need to get that balance between greed and generosity. I'd encourage you before the next session to go before the Lord, offer those things to him, commit those things to him. If you're not giving regularly, maybe think about how the best way to do that. Just begin small, just be willing to be willing and start seeing, sowing some seeds of generosity in your life. God will bless you for it. Next session, we've got a whole different thing for you. This is about growth. It's still about you. The first two sessions are about you, provision for you. And the second one that we're going to do next session is about growth, how God can shape us and mold us and use work to transform us into his image. So looking forward to doing that. Until then, God bless you as you serve him in the marketplace. Mm -hmm.